crazy about alignment. So yes, in Wito, Pauline, myself, we are crazy about alignment. We started uh, Wito um, five, five years ago in, in France and um, we started Wito in Singapore uh, three years ago. I am uh, Yann Follin. I am French. I have been living for five years in Singapore. And so I am partner in Wito Architect with Pauline Godry. And Pauline, she's taking care of the French project while I'm taking care of uh, the Singapore and Asian, uh, Asian project. Yes, uh, I am architect and we are all architects uh, in, uh, in the office and we are young, we are excited, we are motivated and whatever things we can design, we do. So that's why it spans from architecture, exhibition design, we do a bit of curatorial work, interior design, art installation, lighting installation. We have a, an R&D department in this office about sustainable tropical architecture. So that what we do is basically creating, that's it. The most important thing that we do in Wito, the way that we are designing, or what we are designing, is through respect. We respect the people that we are working for, and we respect the environment that we are working in. So when I started Wito in, in Singapore, I had been contacted by the Art Science Museum to work on the Andy Warhol exhibition. And so that was an amazing way of starting my own career in exhibition design, working with Andy Warhol. It was the Andy Warhol 15 Minutes Eternal, which was the first Asia retrospective. So whatever we did here, we had to study the museum, the particularity of that museum, which is a curved museum uh, with a very specific way of, of uh, going inside and walking inside. And yes, you have that, that box that we call the emotion box, like to, to, again, to greet the people and to leave all of your emotion away, to be able to receive a new emotion and to understand better who was Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol is all about box. It's a box. So, and that's what you see. It's low ceiling, everything is reflective, and the first thing that you see is, oh, art is too hard. Andy Warhol is all about square, all about rectangle, all, all about rep repetitive element. So, to help better the experience, where we had iconic element, moments of attraction. You will realize that it is something that we like to do in our design, some moments of attraction. Just something that is like memorable, that you keep in your mind. That were just some moment where the exhibit and the artwork are merging to explain better the artwork. Um, so, and he was uh, doing all of the shop, the shop front, uh, the shop window for, uh, for the shoemaker. So that's why we wanted to show that with a kind of like industrial shelf and to put shoes from the 50s just exhibited. The first day of the show, it was, it was amazing. People were just like, like interacting so much and it's really fun because the temptation and we had to drill those shoes, not to glue them because we started to glue and girls, you cannot imagine. No? Girls, they cannot resist in touching. And of course they were starting to touch and I remember I was nearby and they start to touch and they start to rip because they want to try. Because in the collective memory, you see shoes on display, you're in a shop. Of course you can take them. And so of course, and so we had to drill them because glue, someone just like unglue them. <laughs> so, and that's the fun part of it. So we are really making fun a lot. And you can feel, you, you could see the people smiling a lot because pop is fun. That's it, pop is fun. function of a museum is to dream, is to make people dreaming. And for a very short moment of innocence, 
you are no longer with yourself. You are with the artwork. You are with something else in your mind. I remember when I when I pick up that, that office, some of my friends they told me, oh, you, you took the green the green office, because it is true that in the afternoon, because of the sun going onto that building, everything is becoming green. I was just starting my my company here. Basically, I was working for the National Art Gallery, and I thought very naively that when I would stop working for that project, I would have many contacts that will give me many projects. Wrong totally wrong. From one day I was managing a team of 20 people, the day after I was in my guest bedroom in my home working on a wooden plank on nothing. And I was like, okay, okay, so it, this will be more tough than what I thought. And so all of the contact that I had, nothing, zero. No one ever contacted me back, all of the people that I was contacting never replied. So I had an opportunity in a shopping center, the name is Millennia Walk. So I met that guy and so he said, okay, uh, we are about to do some refurbishment of that shopping center. Would you like to, to work with us? And I'm like, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. For me, there are two moments in the life of the people that are the moment when you have nothing, nothing else to do than just looking at where you are. Toilet, when you are sitting on the, uh, on the seat, huh? you have nothing else to do than just looking at like, whatever is around you. And also in the lift, and just wait and you wait. And, and that's an amazing moment. And you are looking at the space around you. And you discover it and you find that there are a lot of small details here and there. And that's it. And you go inside, and here, again, we played with a certain hierarchy of the space, the lighting environment, and playing with simple materials, simple color. We just play with a bichromatic effect, black, white, that's it. And everything is perfectly aligned. One tile, two tiles, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiles. And everything is aligned to that. And we are proud because they had been uh, selected by the Yahoo Award as one of the top three best toilets of Singapore. <laughs> Working on a car park uh, is not the sexiest thing ever, but at the same time, it's fantastic and without changing anything because you cannot you cannot remove the column you cannot remove the pipes it's just like painting so it's a kind of art installation on 60,000 square meters we simplified all of the color system so five only and the color that you have here is the same color that you have on the pipe and so that means that you have water going in where this red is a red that we are using for another zone, and this is for all of the fire, uh, the fire things. This orange is the same. Orange is electricity, but it's also another zone. So the color played an important, very important role. And in addition to that, when you are going from one space to another, from one zone to another, you have a moment, a junction, a point of attraction that is even more bold with the color, and. In addition to that, we are having a kind of light installation as a kind of kinetic effect, because don't, don't forget that you are driving. So your brain will remember that when you see a lighting effect like this, you are going through something, you will change the zone. And that's it. So it's just, we play with a short memory of the brain. And those, this light in the ramp, we positioned it according to the speed of the car. Because when you go in, you drive fast, but when you arrive at the bottom, you slow down. So that's why at the beginning, you have more space, more spaces in between the lights. And when you slow down here, it's shorter. So that's, that's the car park. And, and yes, when I was explaining to the people that, that were working on the car park, they were like, 
why? Why a car park? What's the point? Because when you are a designer, like everything should be designed. And the car park is part of the experience, such as, such as a toilet is part of the experience. Before coming to Singapore, I had this uh, wallpaper magazine and it's, uh, inside this wallpaper magazine there were uh, an article about the iconic architecture of Singapore from the 70s. And so there were this building, Pearl Bank, it is, uh, it's a tower that, is, that has been built in 1979 and it is a cylindrical tower that is open on one side and the particularity of this tower is that it is uh, having a duplex inside that due to the shape itself of the tower it creates a kind of like air chimney where the the air is sucked in and so the wind just enters inside and you are constantly in a kind of small breeze that is very pleasant and coming from Paris which is an old city going to live in a, a metropolis like Singapore it was the best way to start a life here to live in a tower and that was um, the setting of my life in, in Singapore. So I moved to Chiang Bahru, in which I lived four years. And I moved there on the ground floor, coming from the level 20. And as long as you live on the ground floor, you have this immediate connection with the city. Well, when you're on the ground floor, of course the people passing by, you can talk with them, you can see them directly, you can interact with them, and you can hear them, you can hear them talking in the street. And what is interesting in this neighborhood is that it's an example of people taking ownership of the space, just by putting plants, pot of plant or a table, and all of those places that I, that I have been living in, they are all nurturing me into the design that I am that, that I am doing on a daily basis. And that is my everyday life from which I'm learning a lot on how to design spaces in a tropical environment. I, I would say that is what makes Wito very rich in a, in a way because we have this multiple culture and whatever Pauline is doing in France has a very strong impact on what we do here and vice versa. There is this very strong relationship. People are, keep asking me, uh, but why, why do you do small projects? Why do you continue doing that? And, and it's the same in, in, in France, huh? Pauline as well, she's continuing doing small projects because it is where you can test many things in a faster way. And also because you are meeting so many different people and that are nurturing ourselves and nurturing our way of designing. We usually give um, a three-letter code uh, for all of our projects. And so that project, the name is Eng, because it was in Eng Kong Place in, uh, in Singapore. And it's an existing house, it's a terrace house that has been built in uh, the early 90s. So the brief was to do a house for a multi-generation family, for the parents, the grandparents, the kids, plus a helper. And it is, I think, the very first project where we uh, started to apply a passive, passive principle for tropical architecture. Mostly opening more the house, opening more the spaces, concentrating the technical spaces on one side, and having this spinal column, which is a staircase, as the main feature of the house, connecting all of the different levels. The staircase has no thread, you have only the step. It is for the cross ventilation, for the natural ventilation. Yes, it's a tropical feature, but it is also what I call a community feature. Because if you are on the ground floor here, you can hear whatever is happening there and you can hear whatever is happening there. So it is a subtle way of connecting the people together. Very subtle, just by hearing, that's it. Yes, in Wito, Pauline, myself, 
we are crazy about alignment. That's our obsession. Basically, what happened is that when I was uh, I was 10 years old, I was uh, on the last year of primary school. My both parents were working. My big sister, my big brother, uh, they were already in a, a junior high school, and I was going home. I was going back home, but I didn't have the right to have the keys. The thing is, my parents were constantly late. My brother, and my sister, the same. So I had to wait every single day one to two hours sitting on the landing zone in the front of my door of my apartment and waiting and looking at the floor and I was living, I was living in a social housing in the north of uh, Paris in a very poor area and so I was waiting for one to two hours every single day for one year looking at the floor and the floor was 50 by 50 millimeter tiles with uh, this kind of uh, pattern and in between a black pointing of maybe two millimeter and that's what I was looking at every single day. Grid is the genesis of all of our projects. If you don't set up the right grid, you don't set up the right building. So this one is Q because it is in Q Crescent, uh, K-E-W, and it's for a French family. They have three kids that were born in many different countries. The family itself, it's an amazing family. The father is from Corsica. The mother, she's from Bangladesh, but raised in Belgium. And so they approach me and they say, okay, we just bought this house. This house is horrible, uh, but we bought it because we believe there is a soul and we believe you can do something amazing in it. And so the brief was, we have three kids plus the parents plus the helper, plus they needed a room for the mother to work at home because she was working at home at that time. So they asked me to do seven rooms in an existing structure that we're having only four. We found out that there are split levels everywhere and due to those split levels, you can just put other rooms in it. We really push for like, reopening the buildings, reopening the facade, just to reconnect human with nature. When I say nature, it's like that you can breathe, that you can you can feel what is happening outside, and that's it. That's nature. Just like feeling that you have life around yourself. And and by doing that, it's also reconnecting people together in a simple way, in a very simple way. Because otherwise, we just end up in living in big metropolises where no one talks to each other. And that became uh, the, the main core of our activity, to become a sustainable architect uh, that we completed with this R&D department that we opened last year to develop um, tropical sustainable architecture and to sensitize our client on that and we just try to put it everywhere inside our project. Singapore will be next year 50 years old. It's a very young country compared to other countries. It's a very young city compared to other cities. The city is developing very fast and is reaching some dimensions that are far beyond whatever we have in Europe. to develop a city in such condition. The verticalization of the city, 
Is it the future of the metropolises, of those jumbo cities in, in Southeast Asia? Yes, it is. It is inevitable. So how to make that with a human scale? There is this uh, new typology that has been built and developed in Singapore, where you have towers that are connected to each other. So, uh, such as the Pinnacle, which is uh, a social housing, that is seven towers connected at the level 26 for the inhabitant of the tower and connected on the top for the inhabitant plus for the general public. Bear in mind that the Pinnacle is 20,000 inhabitants. It's a village. So how to implement that and to have a, a, a better vision for the future? I, I believe it is within sustainability. I'm talking about the shape itself of an architecture piece that will relate to its immediate context. Architecture is for me something important that is above myself, almost something sacred, I would say. And that as architects, we are here on earth to improve the daily life of the people. That's it. So from art, artwork, art installation, exhibition design, museum, everything is related just to, to make people dreaming. The more I can design, the more I can explore, the, the happier I will be. Sometimes I may forget myself, yes, it is true, but in the same time it is something that I really enjoy doing. And if there is one motto that can define uh, Wito, is that, is work hard, play hard. <laughs>